Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. Two weeks ago, we looked at the connectors on our electronic speed control on the output side to our brushless motor. This week, we're gonna be looking at the connectors from the input side of our speed control to our battery pack. How do you select the connectors for your application and what kind of connectors are available? We're gonna look at this in a few different ways. We're gonna figure out exactly how we select the connectors for our application. We're gonna look at connectors ranging from about zero to 180 amps of continuous discharge power. And we're also gonna take a look at a few of my examples so that you're able to see the type of connectors that I'm putting on my personal radio control vehicles. Connectors are often an overlooked component on radio control vehicles. And connectors are also one of the most important things that are within our power system. If the connectors fail, you have a big problem on your shoulders. Imagine flying a radio controlled airplane and you incorrectly select the connectors for that application. What could happen if you did this is those connectors heat up to the point where it actually desolders the connection point and you lose power from your main battery pack. If your plane only has one primary battery pack on board, you're also going to lose the power that gets fed to the receiver, which is going to control your control system on board. If you lose that power, that means your plane is almost certainly going to crash. And then from there, it costs you hundreds of dollars. Let's take a look at how we can avoid this situation. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to know is the rating that you need for your connector. How do you determine that rating? Well, there's a few different ways that you're able to do this. The first way would be you can simply just measure it and size the connectors accordingly. The second way that you can identify the amount of current that is gonna be pulled from your battery pack is by looking at similar setups online, finding out what guys are running and if it matches your system that you plan to use, how much power are they actually drawing? The third way is to look at the speed control. If you have a 100 amp rated speed control, you're going to need connectors that can withstand at least 100 amps of current being discharged from them. Ideally, what you wanna do is you don't wanna just be at that mark. You wanna give yourself headroom just in case your power system draws more than just the 100 amps. We talk about reliability a lot on this channel. If we were looking at a power system that draws 100 amps of power, we want to get connectors that are suitable for around 120 to 130 amps of current. This way we give ourselves some extra headroom. Now that we know how much current we're gonna draw in our power system, we can then go ahead and match that up for a set of connectors. Let's take a look at a bunch of connectors that are rated right from around zero amps all the way up to 180 amps of continuous current. We'll first start off right on the small end of things. This connector here is good from zero to around five amps of continuous current. It is known as the JST RCY connector, not to be confused with many other JST type connectors that are available. This one I typically call just the red JST connector. Later in the video, you can see exactly where I use this connector within my radio controlled applications. The next connector on our list covers that zero to 30 amp mark. This is known as the XT30. Now I'm a big fan of using XT connectors. The 30 in the name identifies the maximum continuous discharge that that connector is good for, this being 30 amps. Jumping up to the next connector available, that would be the XT60. As you can see from this battery and connector here, the connector is relatively still small, even though it can supply 60 amps of current. The connector utilizes 3.5 millimeter bullets inside of this connector in order to deliver that 60 amps of continuous discharge. The next available connector runs all the way up to 90 amps. This connector is known as the XT90 and is able to deliver, as you guess, 90 amps of current continuously. It utilizes 4.5 millimeter bullet connectors in order to deliver those 90 amps of continuous current. Now, one thing that you've seen quite often with all these connectors that I'm showing you is that both the positive and negative terminals are housed in this case. That is not always the case. Here you have a battery where you have the negative and positive terminals on separate connectors. There's some advantages to the setup and there's also some disadvantages to this setup. These here are 5.5 millimeter bullets, which are generally good up to 130 amps of discharge current. The next connector that we have on our list is the XT150 
connector. It is capable all the way up to 150 amps of continuous discharge current. It utilizes six millimeter bullets in order to deliver that kind of power. And lastly, if this is not good enough for you, you can go all the way up to eight millimeter connectors, bullet connectors to get upwards of 180 amps of continuous discharge power. This is our list of connectors and it surely does not cover all the different types of connectors available for the RC market. If you didn't see your connector listed in our small list, make sure you look up the ratings of your specific connector so that you can size it accordingly to your radio controlled application. Also, let me know in the comments section below, what is your favorite type of connector? We'll talk about mine very shortly. Now one thing you may have noticed is that there was this one connector I showed you, the XT90 that has these specific markings on them. The green markings that you find on this connector is what identifies it as a connector that has an additional feature. That additional feature is an anti-spark feature. It allows us to plug in batteries to avoid that pop, snap, or spark that we're used to seeing when plugging in those higher voltage battery packs. This may have happened to you when you plug in your 4S or higher lithium polymer battery to your speed control. What happens is, as soon as you plug that connector into the speed control, you get that snap or pop because power is being transferred from the battery pack very, very quickly to feed the capacitors located on your speed control, right on the input side of those leads. All of this is completely normal. However, what can happen is as these get plugged in and out multiple times and that spark keeps occurring, it can actually damage your plugs over time. The way to avoid it is by simply installing these anti-spark connectors. Now the way that those anti-spark connectors work is that it has a resistor built into the specific connector side that has the green markings on it. In fact, the resistor is located on the pole that the marking is identified on. As you go and engage these connectors together and you start initializing the connection point, the resistor allows power to transfer slowly enough so that you avoid a spark, but also quickly enough so that when you fully engage it, you don't get to the next step before it's able to fully charge up those capacitors. This example is shown on a XT90 connector, but you can also get anti-spark for many other connector types as well as current capacities. Now let's take a look at a few of my specific applications and exactly what connector types I use with them. So starting right at the bottom end of things, you saw that JST connector. That JST RCY connector is specifically used for micro radio controlled airplanes that I own. This in particular is one of them, where it uses this 2S battery pack and JST connector. The next connector that you saw that I like to use is the XT60 type connector. I use this ranging from anywhere from around 10 to 60 amps of power. A perfect example is even this small vehicle that I have here. It draws only around 15 amps, so this means our 60 amp connector is no problem for it. This connector is small enough to use even in a 1 18th scale vehicle. The next connector I use in my lineup is known as the 5.5 millimeter bullet. There's many advantages and also disadvantages to the way that I use them for my setups. The 5.5 millimeter in my lineup is used in so many different applications, ranging from this 1/8 scale radio control buggy that you've seen to the 1/8 scale radio controlled on-road vehicle that you've seen in other videos and to also the many electric ducted fan jets that I own. I've been using the 5.5 millimeter bullet configuration all the way dating back to 2007. It's an old school setup that still works today. The reason why I like it is because it's very simple, allows me to make connections in tight areas, and it also has a lot of power potential for the size of the connector. Another advantage that I get out of it is that I'm able to go and take multiple batteries and I can put them in series very easily just by connecting the bullets into one another. Anytime you're using these individual bullet connectors on a battery pack, you will have an exposed male connector. The female connector goes on the red, the positive battery side, and the male connector goes on the negative battery side. What you do whenever you're not using the battery pack is you place a cap over top of the male section and everything will be very safe. Well guys, that pretty well covers it for this video. Like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next Monday.